On a regular basis on Book TV on C-SPAN 2, we visit universities to talk with professors who are also authors. This week, we're at Columbia University in New York City, and now joining us is history professor at Columbia, Evan Hafeli, who is the author of this book, New Netherland and the Dutch Origins of American Religious Liberty. Professor Hafeli, what's New Netherland? New Netherland is what is often in the common parlance known as New Amsterdam, um, but uh, more than just the beginnings of New York, it was a big chunk of territory which technically ran from the Hudson River down to the state of Delaware, including what's now Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and most but not all of New York. When was it founded? And it, when, okay. did, when did the Europeans find it? Found uh, it? New Netherland began uh, in the 1620s as a colony founded by the Dutch, uh, and it lasted until the 1660s. 1664, it was conquered by the English. There were a series of Anglo-Dutch wars in the 17th century. The Dutch actually recaptured the place. People don't know this very much, but it became Dutch again for about a year in 1673-74, uh, and then was returned by treaty to the English. What were the goals when the Dutch first came to North America? What, what were the reasons that they came over? Well, Henry of Hudson, the famous discoverer of this area for the Dutch, um, was of course uh, looking for the Northwest Passage. He was sailing for the East India Company, trying to find a way to get to Asia. Um, sailed up the Hudson, uh, which went pretty far, but uh, didn't go all the way to the Pacific, um, and discovered that people there had very nice furs. Uh, and other merchants in Amsterdam were interested in the furs, and uh, so the colony began as a basically a fur trading post, and then with a small um, base of farmers and uh, some soldiers, as part of what became the Dutch West, West India Company's uh, empire in the Atlantic Ocean. And it's an empire that included a couple small islands in the Caribbean, for a little while included big parts of Brazil, um, and some posts in Africa, as well as this, their base in North America. So it was a commercial reason for coming over, not so much a religious reason. It was a commercial reason, yes. Um, but it was tied up within the broader uh, goals of Dutch imperialism, which at the time was to attack and take territory away from, uh, uh, from the Spanish Empire and then uh, the Portuguese as well. Stuyvesant, Peter Stuyvesant himself, the most famous governor of New Netherland, the last governor of New Netherland, began his career fighting for the Dutch in Brazil. And then he went to Curaçao in the Caribbean, a Dutch island. Um, and then, only then, did he come up to New Netherland. So his career kind of shows the connections between all of these places. Even though New Netherland was not on the frontier, it was part of this wider um, uh, imperial effort. Was Peter Stuyvesant a religious man? Did he care about religion? Yes. Many people involved in um, pretty much Everybody at the higher level, certainly in the Dutch West India Company and many people further down, cared very much about religion. Because even though it was a trading company, um, and then it would had this military objective, the Dutch were still fighting for independence from the Spanish. Um, the Spanish was, Spain was an empire. It had a claim to sovereignty over the Dutch. But it was also, of course, a very famous uh, Roman Catholic power. Uh, many of the Dutch were Protestant. And all of the major founders of the Dutch West India Company when New Netherland was established were Calvinists and pretty strict uh, Calvinists. And Stuyvesant was certainly part of that uh, part of that milieu, you could say. So where's the where's the religious liberty part of this? What are we what what key are we missing here? Well, I undertook this study because I. I was a graduate student. I wanted to get at a, um, the story of American religious diversity. Uh, this struck me as a student as something that's very interesting and important about America, that we have so many different religions, and yet we've never had one single official state religion like you have in England or France or Spain. 
Um, and it seemed that there was some aspect of that fact as part of what makes American society very different from European societies where you did have those formerly established churches. In the case of American religious freedom, one of the seeds or origin points that people refer to uh, for where this toleration and diversity comes from is the Dutch colony of New Netherland. Not Stuyvesant himself, but other people in the colony, the directors, the broader um, Dutch system, uh, uh, which even though it had an official church, it never forced people to conform to a single religion in the way that the English church, for example, did, which is what caused the Puritans to leave and go to New England. So um, uh, I thought by looking at what the Dutch did, we would and this is what I've been led to believe by such scholarship as existed, that I would see the beginnings of a distinctly American way of handling religious diversity, a more tolerant way, a more loose, easygoing sort of attitude. Uh, and I, actually, I didn't find anything like that at all. I found very little connection between what the Dutch did and what colonial Americans and US Americans do afterwards. So it's a slightly misleading title, perhaps, in that the answer to the question posed by the title is that there's actually very little connection between Dutch tolerance and American religious liberty. When it comes to the Dutch, did they write in rules about religion? Yes, and a fundamental part of the Dutch um, Constitution, uh, the, uh, the Union of Utrecht that sort of brought the different Dutch provinces together and was basically their constitution until uh, the 1790s, as long as the Dutch Republic existed, um, provided for liberty of conscience and uh, forbade the coercion of religious belief. So right from the beginning, you could not do in the Dutch Republic what was considered normal in <coughs> all the other kingdoms of Europe, which is to force people to conform to the national church, which was, of course, in that country considered the true, correct form of religion. The Dutch rejected that from the very beginning. However, they did also have an official church. They called it the public church. And this, I learned, was the real key to understanding what was distinctive about the Dutch, because they did not force everybody to belong to the official religion of the state, which was the Dutch Reformed Church. However, um, and this, if you know Dutch society now, there's a very big difference between what the Dutch allow you to see in public versus what's possible in private. Um, and in public, there was only one church could be visible, only one church could um, be associated with the state, uh, with the higher levels of office, with all sorts of privileges, um, even though it was subordinate to the state, it was only this one church, the Dutch Reformed Church. That was the public church, as the Dutch called it. So even though they couldn't force people to be Dutch Reformed, if you wanted to get ahead in Dutch society, chances are you might join this church. How was New Netherland viewed by the rest of the colonies, or the rest of the, the current, uh, or at that time, United States? Yeah, well, what's interesting is uh, New Netherland uh, and what I found in the end is very significant about uh, New Netherland for American history is that it was this slightly different Dutch story which sits in between the famous New England story of the Puritans and the southern story of Virginia and Maryland and the Chesapeake colonies. Um, and in all of those places with the important, but at the time very minor um, exception of Rhode Island, uh, you had a belief in a single church and you had enforcement of a single religion. Um, Maryland was a bit of an exception, um, also because that had a Catholic uh, ruling class over a largely Protestant group. But the majority faith within Virginia, within New, in, within New England, belong to one single church. And people who um, 
would not or could not fit in with that system would have to flee and